I'm really getting hungry. It's uh, one o'clock and uh, here on Think Tech, it's restaurants why and <clears throat> it's very important that we understand how the industry is doing because we all want to go back to restaurants and, and, um, and eat like we used to. Hawaii is so dense with restaurants and so many good restaurants and such good experiences at the restaurants. We need to study what's happening. Um, so uh, Cheryl Mat 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 Matsuoka is uh, the executive director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association. And she's going she's gonna to introduce our two guests and two guest restaurants. But I want to give you some hints, Cheryl. Um, the first one is Jeremy Shirakani, Shirakani and the other is Michael uh, Newbert. Uh, okay, those are your hints. Now you go ahead and introduce them, okay? All right, I'd like to introduce Jeremy Shigatani. Jer Jeremy is with Chef Marvel's Restaurant over there on King Street. And Michael Newbert, he is over at Lele's over at Turtle Bay. Okay, well, let's examine. Welcome to the show, you guys. Um, it's nice to have you together this way. It, it, it makes me feel like I want to order something and eat all day. You ever have, you ever have, you ever have guests who, who, who do that? They come in for like a meal and they stay for hours and hours and they have a life experience at the restaurant. And, you know, they, they sort of renew their vows at, at the restaurant, you know? Ever have that? You got to watch them when they do that. You know? Every now and then. Go ahead. Every now and again, we have. Um, they stay for like four hours. Our average dining uh, for Chef Malvo is about two and a half, maybe three hours. Sometimes they stay like four and a half, which is kind of long, but I mean, I really like that's their experience. Yeah, tells you something about it. You have yeah. this experience, Michael, or they, they hang around for a long time and get romantic? Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people have gotten married at Turtle Bay and then they come year after year and celebrate their anniversary. And, you know, they, you know, come for an hour and stay till uh, they're kicking them out at midnight. That's the so way to go. That's the way to go. You want that because they will always, always remember it. It's, it's embedded in their, you know, way of looking at the other person. Okay. So Jeremy, let's talk about what's going on at Chef Mavro. Um, you know, first class uh, dining, high fancy dining, Great food, French, all that. You know, I love French food. Um, so let's talk about how you're doing. So uh, we're actually terrible. <laughs> I don't know how everybody else is doing, but we're terrible. <laughs> but um, since, uh, since everything happened in March, uh, we're a fine dining. We're a tasting menu only. Uh, we used to do about maybe nine, ten courses. And now we do, when we did takeout, uh, we had to do three courses with sides. Uh, we did lunch at two courses, like an entree and dessert. We do, we basically do everything now. We do CSA boxes. Uh, we do uh, every, everything. We do, we do some events. We're doing prepared sauces and uh, we're selling the bread. We're, we're doing everything. Now we're doing outside. Uh, we did it about a month ago, month and a half. And then they shut down. We did it for about two weeks and then they shut down. So we're, that's, we're that's a real problem. I, you know, I, 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 my heart goes out to you because when, when the rules change, you have to dance around the change. You have to change everything you're doing every time they change the rules. Am I right? Yeah. It's a little hard to shift on a dime, you know, like uh, when they shut down on, they make the rule on Tuesday, shut down on Thursday. We, we already have product or we have product coming in. I mean, I can cancel on the purveyor, but that's, that's not really their fault either, you know? So I try and take it and make something out of it. Yeah, speaking of which, there's an interesting issue there. How are the purveyors doing? I mean, you wanna get first class stuff and you, you, know, you have relationships with purveyors um, and then you know, they don't have regular business either. Do they stay in business or, or they go to Tasmania? Um, I found some of them cut to, uh, instead of a five day week, they do three. Um, like us, we were a five day restaurant, but now we do like three services, depending, depending on what we're doing. Uh, it's, it's rough for everyone. <clears throat> so what, what's it like right now? Are you open or closed right now? I'm going to talk about the inside. So we're closed inside. Uh, we have been since, since we started, um, 
uh, about a month and a half ago or so, we decided to do outside. Uh, I was a little concerned about people eating in the parking lot because that's the only outside we have. You can't really uh, do sidewalk dining here on Macaulay and King. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, we have a large parking lot. So we can sit about between 30 and 40 so social distance um, outside at a time. And it's a little difficult because instead of going, we have to go out the back door basically for the food and everything. So we have to prop open the back door. Um, you know, we still need music and uh, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that you don't really think of outside for inside lights, everything. We needed to rent the tables, chairs, uh, see what kind of napkins you put outside, silverware and what you put outside, <clears throat> depending. Our trash is outside, so that's a little, that's a little oh, tricky. I gotta reinvent everything to make it work that way. Yeah. What about what about the uh, traffic here on King Street? There's traffic getting in the way. I mean, is it is it noisy? Is does it change the ambiance? Uh, it's a little noisy, but I mean, it's it's not that bad at night. We start at five now. We started at five thirty, so the traffic wasn't that bad everybody was still kind of close, but now I, I see traffic's getting a little louder, uh, but I mean, it is what it is. Uh, yeah. I, I tell everybody when they make a reservation, you're eating in the parking lot, you know, we still deliver service and food, but you are eating in the parking lot, you know, it's a, it, it's a different environment. We try and make the best of it. Um, mm -hmm. We put an outdoor garden outside and uh, it's, it's a nice parking lot, I think. It's still a parking lot, but. <laughs> well, you know, my guess is you'll find other ways to make it, you know, appealing as time goes by. And uh, are you are you maxing out those tables? What I mean is, uh, are you filling are you filling the tables that you have out there? So we were doing it for two weeks. We did it for about four services. Um, we pretty much maxed out at what we could do. But uh, it's it's still we we still really have to push hard to to get it out there. Um, Chef Mavro is known for uh, fine dining, tasting menus, which is good, and also uh, it it hurts us at the same time because you know not a lot of people have that much money um, to spend. So we did it at a fifty dollar um, <clears throat> set menu, but it's still hard to to shed sometimes that, that negative connotation about our restaurant. You mean that it's expensive? That it's expensive. Local people just, as soon as they hear Chef Mauro, they go, oh, it's ex expensive and they yeah. move on. Well, it was smart for you to reduce the, uh, to a set menu because uh, that, that, that'll, that'll make it more appealing to a certain number of people. But, you know, so, a lot of people don't have jobs now. They're afraid of spending money now. They, you know, so that, yeah. that's got to cut off your, you know, your, your support community just in that alone. It's, um, so what we did, we, we ran it for about four services at $50 set menu. Um, <clears throat> it's easier for us as well to, for logistics, you know, for the front of the house, uh, back of the house, but. I actually made a menu that we're going to launch this week, Friday, and it's going to be an a la carte menu, uh, very limited a la carte, but in line. So it'll actually, if you look at the menu, it looks like a tasting menu, but it's a la carte, uh, a little bit more affordable so that you're not locked into that $50 meal. And if you want, then it's about $50. <clears throat> yeah. Well, you know, um, the, uh, the price looks better, even if it's still a little bit steep. Um, and the parking lot looks great if, if, uh, if they drink enough wine. If they drink yeah. enough wine, things, these things uh, resolve themselves, you know. Cheryl's yeah. laughing. Cheryl, 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 you and I have to go out and, and test the wine there at Chef Mavro, you know. <laughs> yeah, so we're, uh, we're known for our food and wine pairing. But, um, you know, we had to take down the wine a little bit. We still have wine. It's still... Um, it pairs with the food. It's not as exact as our, <clears throat> our original restaurant, but it's, it's definitely affordable gourmet food. 
Mm -hmm. What about now? What about the takeout? I'm interested in that because, you know, if I let's assume I'm the kind of guy who likes to stay at home in the time of COVID, but I still want to eat, eat well, I want to eat what you have. I want to eat French food and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, How do you make that work for me? I call you up, I order the food, I come down, where do I pick it up from? And how do you, what's the presentation like, right? Um, To present it. So I salivate all over the, all over myself. So we, we still, uh, present, we still plate basically in the to-go container. Um, we make our food based on uh, travel, how it's going to go. So I'll tighten up the sauce a little bit more or, you know, loosen it up depending on um, like sometimes you microwave it. So we, we adjust for that. If you heat it up in the oven, uh, you pick up. Uh, if you, we ask for pre-orders since we're not like a regular to go, it's, we're not just like scooping from the steam table or anything. So, uh, <clears throat> we ask that you pre-order, you can pre-order online or give us a call and then we bring everything out to you. You just give us a call when you're here and we bring everything out to you. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. So that, um, um, I, I think that that works, but are you having regular business that way? I mean, are people coming around for that? Are they like, are they like what I was talking about? You know, they want fine food, um, but they don't want to leave home. So they'll come <laughs> pick it up from you. So what, what, what we found was happening was in the beginning um, in about March, we only did a three course dinner menu. And what we found was people are getting their chef Malvo experience at home. They, they plate, their to-go food, we were doing it hot at the time. Uh, They replayed it on their plate, like like they're eating at the restaurant. Um, And they, (laughs) it's it's insane. We we do lunch, dinner, uh, prepared sauces, CSA boxes, and they're almost all different demographics. So lunch customer is different, the the dinner guest is different, and um, we get new return guests from this, which is, we're, we're pretty much rebranding now. Uh, and it's, it's really rough, but we're seeing a lot of new guests. So it's good. That's so. great. Well, it means you're doing something right. What about yeah. website? Is a website play in this process you're talking about? So we had to do a, we had to build a new website. Um, since everything happened so fast, we, we had an original website, Chef Malvro, but, um, we had to change it to M by Chef Malvo Restaurant. <clears throat> um, we overlapped it. So if you search Chef Malvo, it'll go to the same thing. But we had, we had to build everything pretty fast. And we had to build it for uh, online ordering and whatnot. So it's a, it's a full process. It's, it's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> did you get any CARES money? Yeah, we did. Um, so that helped. Um, like everybody else, the money is running out about now. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. right. So, what about, what uh, about your wait staff? Are they, uh, how, how are they, you, did, were you able to retain all of them or did you have to let some of them, you know, go? So some of them, the ones that wanted to stay, we kept them on. Uh, some of them couldn't, they, have, they take care of elderly uh, parents and whatnot or something. So, and some just they didn't want to come back. Um, but the ones that did want to stay, we kept them on. Uh, we did some, uh, we helped, they helped us out for, um, like, uh, to run the to-go food and take orders. And we did small remodeling, like painting and stuff like that. So we tried to keep them on payroll and then we would have to supply everything else, like the, the hardware and stuff for painting and whatnot. But yeah. Well, it's interesting because, um, you know, you're a fine dining place and you have to be flexible if you want to stick around in, the, in an indefinite period of time with COVID. So let me, let me yeah. shift over for a minute to uh, Michael. Well, now, Le- Lele's uh, been around for a long time at Turtle Bay. Was it around when they called Turtle Bay Cooley Lima? Nah, uh, that, that's no. too long ago. <laughs> no, not exactly. We were part of the transition into the newer uh era we actually yesterday celebrated our 18th anniversary we opened Uh september 28th 2002 Uh uh, we're the golf course clubhouse restaurant um we live a lot of different lives you know we go 
of course, we're here because of the golf in the morning, you know, light breakfast, clubhouse fair. And uh, for years, our line was, you know, five o'clock. We switched from cheeseburgers to filet mignon, you know, obviously prime ribs, steak, seafood. And one of the funny things about our business model was we wouldn't do takeout in the evenings, you know, between six and nine because we wanted to focus on the guests that were sitting in the restaurant and make sure they had a great experience. And, and, uh, boy, is that your restaurant? Well, our guests have always been, we learned early on that, you know, live and die by the hotel, live and die by the hotel. So we got into the community and it's actually paying dividends now because those are the folks supporting us. Um, you know, of course, when the hotel is operating in their full steam, of course, we get some of the whipped cream on top, you know, with, you know, the overflow and, you know, resort guests, of course, they want to eat around the property and, you know, not just whether it's in the hotel or, or uh, Roy's over there on the beach, you know, they, yeah. they, they spend their time around. Um, but right now, it's obviously all local business and our demographics basically is Haula to Haleiwa, Um there's not a lot of people out here. <laughs> Do you change your prices? Do you change your menu? Uh, we definitely streamlined the menu and we did, um, we adjusted the prices slightly down uh, initially. Um, and they were fair to begin with. You know, we, we always had the reputation of not being the typical resort, you know, uh, overpriced their perception of it. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, when we streamlined the menu and, took away options we felt compelled to you know make it a little more local friendly um i, 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 and, wanted, to, yeah. I wanted to talk yeah. about the, uh, the the putting green thing uh, cheryl told me about it that was pretty exciting to find out that you could do that um so i first thing is the uh, the hotel or at least the golf course uh, was cooperative with you and uh, said michael why don't you use the putting green which is a great a great idea a great connection um, yeah, so you're out there with the putting green, and uh, that that's pretty exciting. Um, you know, in, in, uh, in Jeremy's case, it's the parking lot. For you, it's the putting green. Uh, getting yeah. outside. So tell us how that works, and and whether it's been successful. Yeah. Well, fortunately for us, to begin with, we have a high percentage of outdoor seating to begin with. Our dining room is is what it is, but. You know, 70% of our seating to begin with is out under the covered lanai, you know, kind of all around the outside. And uh, and for that reason, we haven't reopened the dining room at all since March. You know, we've obviously opened for service, but it's uh, it's only for, you know, dining, you know, the outside, you know, and really people don't really want to be inside to tell you the truth. Um, so what happens is we have this outdoor lanai seating and and as, you know, we get a little momentum, kind of running out of space, you know. And so, you know, kind of on, on a whim initially, we started just putting tables out, which is, you know, just adjacent to our lanai, putting tables out on the um, putting green. And uh, the only thing we fear is, you know, a afternoon squall coming through and raining on the parade. But uh Fortunately, we've had great weather for the last couple months, <laughs> and uh, and it grew and grew to the point where that's the preferred place to go. You know where the and the best part about it is it takes the social distancing to the extreme. You know they say six feet apart. Their tables out there are twenty feet apart, and then they bring you know they have the family and then the kids can run around and do wind sprints on the putting green, and that was always part of the deal. You know at Lele's when it's family friendly and parents bring in their children and they have their meal and then they send them out to run around on the putting green and burn up all their energy. I have this, I have this image. I have this image, Michael, you know, you sit there, you finished, uh, you know, the entree, uh, you're going to go to dessert and uh, the husband says to the wife, uh, why don't we, why don't we putt a little? And uh, so they, you give them a, you give them a putting iron and, and and a golf ball and they go out and putt. People do. You're Actually, kidding, do really? Do I was yeah. joking. <laughs> yeah. And not so much, not so much on the the green that we're using, but uh, the the golf operation has this really cool thing. It's uh, uh it's called the breaks. It's uh, it's like a putt putt course with real grass that 
zigs around the property and it was intended for resort guests to have something to do and it's grown into being something for locals something to do instead of being <laughs> you know stuck in their house and you know more so on the north shore folks aren't really happy being locked up you know and they're not necessarily trying to poison the well but you know they want to get out they want to go to the beach they want to ride or jog or walk or whatever so they can come and put a, you know 18 holes on a what essentially is a putt putt course but nicer you know it's it's like professional it's cool and so it's a it's a good diversion but uh, what, about, what about the future of this i mean um I, I would ask you both this question but um you know covid's not going away anytime soon you could talk about vaccines all day not going to happen right now um and um you know we're going to be stuck with a, a limitation um, on gatherings and for that matter restaurants for a while I have to build that into planning so uh, what have you learned in the putting green and other creative things that you've done for Lele's that you would carry forward that you would make, you know, permanent? Well, I can tell you that a high percentage of our guests want us to keep it, you know, want, because it goes both ways. We put tables out there, but for this last month, when we were in the lockdown mode, people were, because we were only doing takeout at the point at that time. And people were really just taking it upon themselves and they were bringing a blanket and throwing it out there. And who are we to say no, you know? And so, uh, and they weren't violating anything. It wasn't like they're coming in big groups. They just didn't want to have to go back to their house and eat, you know, soggy takeout food out of a box if they can have it right after it's, after it's made. And my partner and I discuss it all the time as how are we going to, regulate this in the future in other words now it's a little a little more casual that if a little rainstorm shows up people can you know duck under the lanai and wait it out um when there's formal service and there's plates and bottles of wine and all that it's going to be a different beast and uh and we don't quite know but we know that that outdoor kind of seating is kind of here to stay i mean yeah yeah i agree, earlier, agree. Yeah. it always was but don't forget don't forget chinzano umbrellas right chinzano umbrellas yeah well we thought about like doing the, the another like a little tent out there of some kind of yeah. I don't know, you know, whatever we're we're trying to be open-minded because it's it's a great amenity and it's very relaxing but it's a logistical nightmare when it comes to multi-courses and and you know giving proper service you know to refill the water, you know, my, my service staff will, you know, be putting on miles and miles of foot traffic to, <laughs> it, well, I, su I suggest that you've got to find ways to be more efficient that way and maybe modify yeah. the whole meal, the whole theater of the meal, if you will, um, going forward because, because it's more difficult. Yeah. Let me, let me flip back to uh, Jeremy, because I want to ask you guys what, what it looks like. Okay. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't look great for any restaurant in the in the in the state right now. But how does it look for you, Jeremy? What do you see as the future? Are you are you going to make it? Are you going to have to dig? What are you going to have to do to make it? Is my question. Um, are we going to make it? I don't know. Every day is every day is a new day. <laughs> every week is a new week. Uh, we we just play it week by week, and hopefully we survive the week. Um, <laughs> What we do to try and make it, uh, fine dining is extremely difficult at this time. And in Hawaii, it's even harder. Um, so what we're doing is we, we split it up. We pretty much run five different concepts in one restaurant. Um, I considered, I always think about what next and what's going to happen. What if this, you know, what to, so we don't, we're never, uh, totally just pivoting on a dime. Uh, but <clears throat> I thought about doing outdoor and indoor uh, on, on a reservation system like Open Table or Resi. It's a little difficult. Um, mm -hmm. It's a little confusing for people. The best idea I got right now is we do two days outdoor, two days indoor, and then a brunch outdoor in addition to our lunch. So everything is separate. We're pretty much running like five different restaurants. You're just in one location. Uh, that's 
<clears throat> to, to supplement the revenue. Plus we're opening uh, pretty much a, a new, we're rebranding. And so to do all that, I think we have to do this. I thought about uh, different uh, ordering systems uh, where somebody can order without calling the waiter over. Um, yeah, I, like the like the touch button and whatnot. So um, yeah, yeah. Our our uh, I think our our service is a little different. It it has, we have that personal touch. Uh, we're lucky enough to have good uh, front of the house, and so they don't. People don't really need a button like that. We're always on it. Uh, you should pretty much have to ask for nothing. Even even in a setting like this, I mean, it's a little difficult, but we still try and deliver uh, food and service at just a more affordable price right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, nobody knows, uh, you know, the ups and downs of the next few months, really. It's like a roller coaster in so many ways. Um, all you got to be is fast and creative. So, Michael, what do you see as the future? Uh, if you get CARES money, are you okay? Um, you're um, going to be we, able to weather the storm here or what? I'm very confident that we can weather the storm. Um, we have always managed our money pretty good. And, uh, and you know, we just give people what they want. But, uh, you know, fortunately, we've felt a little bit I'm, I'm optimistic for the future believe it or not I probably don't hear that that often from a restaurateur and we recognize that it'll not be what it was for sure um, and I was telling someone the other day we had a, a fabulous weekend by new standards <laughs> this last yeah. and it was golf golf opening up um, recognize it's a little honeymoon period so the golfers were out in force and so all day long busy it segued into dinner business and and, you know, there was momentum and we, that's the word we like to use on a regular basis. And we had really good momentum going through the summer up until the end of August when the, the rug got ripped out from under us. And it went from, you know, instead of zero to 60, it went from 60 to zero. And, uh, and, you know, we made our way through the month and, you know, doing the takeout for a couple hours a day. And, um, but when we returned um, from last week, there's a little energy and it's obviously people are cooped up and they want to get out. But, you know, we're our angle is just to just keep making people happy. The yeah, guests I, that I think eat. that's central in all of this, because when people go to a restaurant, especially in Hawaii, they're happy. And um, when they're cooped up, uh, a restaurant alleviates that. And and uh, when they need a little romance, uh, they, they want to have a meal together. Uh, and those are so attractive that they're irresistible for most people. Uh, what, do you, what do you think, Cheryl? What have we learned here today? Um, what would you carry back as a, uh, a, let's say, a takeout on this? <laughs> hey, Restaurant tours are creative, right? We create meals, we create appealing banquets and look at these two guys they are so creative um when i drive by um chef marvels i see the big luau tent in his parking lot and i've seen it crowded with like lights out there and it's very festive and i hear the music i haven't been out to lele's but i can envision right a green putting green and you've got your kids running around doing somersaults and cartwheels all over the golf course you know where they can't do that in a normal restaurant dining room setting so restaurant tours are very creative and i know moving forward you're going to hear more creative ideas coming out of the restaurant industry and you're going to hear them right here on Think Tech Restaurants Hawaii with Cheryl Matsuoka and the likes of uh, Jeremy Shigakani and Michael uh, Newbert. Thank you, you guys, for coming around and sharing your stories with us. And we're going to we're going to do this uh, every couple of weeks with Cheryl, so we can keep track of how how the industry is doing because it is central to our lifestyle in Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you so much to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Aloha. Peace.